Hey Brett Bags, it's Jay. Today I'm taking you through pretty much every new item that you can craft and make in Smallland's latest update, the Amber Valley. From the hand cannon to the scorpion tree and much more. I'm going to show a little bit about some of the weapons and what they do, give you some top tips on some of the animals or where to find them, and talk about the costs of crafting and making some of this stuff. So do leave a like if you find it useful and make sure you're subscribed. Let's go. So to go ahead and make the scorpion armor, you're going to need eight urticating hair. Obviously, you get from the brand new tarantulas. As you would expect, these guys are pretty tough. They have got pretty strong attacks. And you can find some by the coastline near the trader, just moving around here. They usually come out of that hole where all the salt pate is and some of the sulfur. But generally, they are scattered around quite frequently, so I don't feel like I need to show you exactly where they are. You should be able to find at least five or six of them scattered all around the area. And you should get at least one urticate in air every time you kill one. You're going to need a lot of them, though, obviously, to make the armor. 14 scorpion chitin. And again, these guys are absolutely everywhere, so it shouldn't be too many problems finding them. And obviously, they're going to be hitting you a lot with their poisonous tail. 12 pyrite, you'll also need two scorpion telsons and four snake leather. And there's pretty much, I do believe, three snake locations. One all the way at the bottom of the trench, all the way over to the west. One just before you see that massive land bridge should be in a cave just here. Then you've actually got one on the left hand side of the road, right towards where you get to the world's edge border with the bridge. It's done nothing to it, nothing at all. So yeah, maybe explosives and bombs, which I'm going to show you guys later, isn't the way to deal with these guys. They are incredibly strong and they just move around a lot, so it's pretty tough to fight them. So you may need to go back and forth, hopefully, to get some distance before taking them on. I'm going to have some more detailed guides on the best way to take on all of these, as there's not many weaknesses revealed with the scorpion and the snake as well. So I definitely want to spend a bit more time seeing what exactly they take most damage from. And you see, it's a one for one ratio. So you only need one snake skin to make one snake leather. So let's pick up some pyrite and actually make the armor. Okay, one, two, three, and four. Nope. Okay, there we go. So it offers cold protection of six on all the pieces. Then the chest piece is 44 protection with the rest being 40. Weirdly, the chest doesn't have any extra protection against certain damage types, but the rest is blunt damage. You can see durability is pretty big, 1400. There's the actual armor itself. It's not bad, not bad. Interestingly enough, it does say I can't actually upgrade any of the scorpion armor. So you can't upgrade this stuff because it is kind of max level, but there is a chance of making better versions of it if you've put points into intelligence. I'm going to cover that in more detail towards the end of the video. We've got the brand new urticating darts. These are made out of four urticating hair, two resin, two ironwood, and two refined saltpeter. You'll get 10 back. You can see that it does poison damage of six, critical hit chance of five, so two extra damage versus the regular poison darts. So the Telson hammer, you craft with one Telson, five pyrite, two reishi leather, and five ironwood. Yeah, it's pretty meaty. Obviously not doing as much damage, but not using up as much of your stamina. And the powerful hits do quite a bit of chunky damage too. So he's got blunt damage of 40 to 55, critical hit chance of 5%, stamina usage 20, blocking power 24. And durability here is a thousand. None of these are different rarities, this is the base one, so that is the base stats. It's pretty badass, not gonna lie, it's pretty big. So the Aetherin Hammer does 52 to 60 damage, 5% critical hit chance, stamina usage of 30, and blocking power 24. So the Telson Hammer's just a smaller use of stamina, but it doesn't do as much damage. And obviously we've got a brand new Pyrite Pickaxe, 3 Iron Ingots, 5 Iron Woods, 10 Pyrite, and 2 Rishi Leather. Pretty much does around 20 more harvest damage than a regular Iron one. Then we've got the Viper Sabre, going to need one of the Snake Fangs, Five pyrite, two rishi leather, and four ironwood. Oh my god! Super easy! So, yeah, pretty effective at taking care of the AFAR scouts and stuff. So, the armor, the hammer, and the scorpion tree can all be bought from Sarnak in the brand new temple, which I'm going to show you guys in a second. And I do believe the saber you get as an unlock once you defeat the snake 
and then you can get one of its teeth. You need 100 hoots for the armor set, you need 50 for the hammer and 75 for the scorpion tree. And lastly, you will need six scorpion tails to gain access to Sarnak at the altar. Obviously Sarnak is here at the bottom, that should pop up once you're directed by Granger. And of course Granger, he is literally right here, so I don't need that anymore. Just in front of a car, you should be able to, if you approach directly from this angle, be safe from any turrets. It does look like they've added more turrets to the outside, as I didn't notice them the first time. So you might not be able to fly your bird almost directly in. But if you can take them out at least, you can then go ahead and pretty much dive into the chasm with your blue tit. And if you have to, walk the rest of the way to Sarnak. I wouldn't recommend taking your blue tit and flying all the way over to this snake or that one until you've taken out some of the turrets. You might think you're quick enough to get past them, but eventually you will get hit and it doesn't even have to knock the bird down anymore before you actually start taking damage. Given it costs 500 hoots as well as a egg, it's an incredible expensive tame, so you don't want to lose it just by getting killed by a few turrets. For scorpion treat, you're going to need one blood sack, one frog flesh, one petal and one seed oil. And just FYI, that merchant obviously lives in a small tiny cave. It will sell just the regular stuff that the same one does all the way to the south, which means you don't have to travel as far. New things the merchant sells, brand new light fittings. You can see the new lamps there. Firefly juice, some chitin and some fiber string, and you can craft them. You get a small, medium and pretty much large lamp, and they're pretty cool. The medium and large ones, you will need some feathers to go ahead and craft it. So going back to Granger, he'll teach you how to make the fire sand and pretty much then you can make the bombs. But then if you want the actual hand cannon, you are going to have to go and over to the West Temple. You buy the scorpion tree, you make a scorpion tree, you give the scorpion tree to Granger and he'll give you the recipe for iron ammo as well as the hand cannon. So you make the urticate darts obviously at a workbench and the fire sand bombs, they're the new ones as well. They obviously get made at the apocryphy table. Definitely better to use them against a cluster of enemies as you do more wider damage to all of them. You're going to need two scorpion chitin, two pyrites and five fire sand. So obviously you need the brand new fire sand which you refine the saltpeter and the sulphur to go ahead and craft into and this is all done at the apocryphy table. So you need two charcoal, four refined saltpeter and one refined sulphur. It costs five sulfur to make one refined sulfur and just one saltpeter to make one refined saltpeter. And for the cannon, you're going to need two flint, 10 pyrite, 10 iron ingots, five reishi leather and 10 ironwood. The iron ammo is five iron ingots and 10 fire sand. Let's see how effective it is taking these guys on. Whoa, okay, yeah, pretty effective. What about at range and distance? Oh, there we go. So expensive ammo, but pretty devastating. And lastly, talking a little bit about the respecking and how it works in getting better gear or better rarity of gear. So you have to head to Hearn and it costs 200 hoots to go ahead and get all your points back. And to keep this version short, I'm going to do a separate video on this because it needs a little bit more constructive criticism. Obviously, I don't like the system. Basically, you put a bunch of points into intelligence and that increases the chance of getting rare or better quality armor weapons. There's five different tiers and they go up to like legendary. But it's only a random chance that you'll get this, otherwise you'll still just get a bog standard weapon or armor piece when you craft something. So this is kind of why I've got the hump with it. You can't really game it and just go ahead and put all your points into intelligence because it stops you from doing that anyway. There's only so many you can do unless you get fresh experience points. And then you can do that to a certain extent and then go ahead and respec again and put your points back into your health and other stuff once you've crafted a bunch of stuff. But it's just way too much of a grind having to go and get a bunch of resources for only a small chance of actually crafting something pretty unique. So I'm going to talk about this in a separate video. Like I said, I do want to do just a bit more research into exactly how many intelligence points affects what, if there's any kind of thresholds, because it's still a bit unclear exactly how many you really need to get the highest legendary tier of weapon chances. But hopefully the rest of this video has been good for you, telling you exactly everything new in Small Lands new update, all new items and some top tips. If it has, please do leave a like, check out the individual Let's Play videos and some of the guides I've already made. And as always, I'll see you at bags later.